Hello and welcome back to a new let's play. Maybe it is a mini let's play, maybe we're doing a full let's play of a new game which is called Banishers, uh, the Ghost of Eden, uh, which has been just freshly released. It uh, has come from Don't Nod as a game developer uh, who is located in Montreal and Paris, uh, Paris I think. Uh, they have been the masterminds behind the Vampire uh, game, uh, which is kind of a similar themed game. So what is Banisher, uh, the Ghost of New Eden, about? Uh, imagine kind of a combination of a bit elements of The Witcher, some elements of Dark Souls in terms of gameplay, but uh, predominantly a lot of cinematic, so an RPG that really feel, uh, feels like watching a long movie with a bit of a horror slash uh, mystery-esque feel to it. So we're going to be in for a great uh, ride. If you are interested in what you're seeing, want to play it yourself, um, then head over uh, to the Games uh, Shop Workshop page where you can get a discounted version doesn't cost you anything more and I get a little bit of an affiliation bonus so it's the cheapest way of uh, purchasing the game at the moment and uh, you are very welcome. Elsewise let's move directly to the actual gameplay. I have spent so far about an hour in the game and we're going to start uh, over from a new so I want to make it as much of a blind quote-unquote playthrough as possible but I just want to get familiar with uh, the uh, sense of the game. So we're going to start a complete uh, new game. Uh, the game offers you story uh, mode which is really just a narrative and I can see that uh, for a game like this it might be an interesting way of actually playing it on story. Easy, normal, challenging and we are <coughs> of course going in with very hard and let's go Madam, sir, the ship lies at anchor off New Eden. A tender stands at your disposal. Dreamed of clouds, great long fluffy bastards, low over the sea. I dreamed of the abyss in the darkest reaches of the deepest ocean. A good day to you, my love. And a good day to you, too. Are we in New England? <sighs> Welcome to America. Something's bothering you. Charles's letter. What of it? The ghost must be uncommonly dangerous, or he would banish it himself. The we shall charge him double. <sighs> I'm serious. If the Reverend needs help, this can be no easy business. Red, you best be ready. I'll be careful, Master Duarte. Your apprentice stands ready to serve. Come on, Atea, we need to go. Night be. <laughs> Rory McWraith, gallant to the last. Life to the living, death to the dead. Consider our lovers, Antea and Red, the greatest banishers I ever knew. 
Life to the living, we say, and death to the dead. It is not so simple. Since the dawn of humanity, the dead have lingered. Dead as alive, we are complex and emotional beings. Many and tangled are the ties that bind. Since the beginning of memory, banishers have fought to sever those ties. Death is but a trifle. It comes to us all. To haunt or be haunted. There lies the true horror. I, Charles Davenport, should know it. The haunting of New Eden scared me to death. I dearly wish I had not begged my friends to come and lift the curse. If this is June, I'd hate to see January. I'd wanted to freeze my backside off in the summertime. I'd have stayed in Scotland. London wasn't much better. Look at it. It's cold as a bishop's arse. And twice as white. I don't mind saying it, I'm very disappointed. Charles wasn't lying. New Eden is cold as death. You may well be disappointed. You'd better be at the tavern. With a hot grog. Or two. Alright, so let's start getting I it on. Of long, boring sea voyages to grim, faraway lands. Yes, they say. I can't remember so the you can last already time see something else than work. It plays After a little this, bit like we Witcher. Set sail somewhere warm and safe. The dead don't linger. No such place. But it's not a bad idea. What I like about the game is the very well designed ambient. Absolutely gorgeous. Good, we're coming to our first obstacle. I think we can get through here. Sure. Let's go traipsing through the rotten, falling down house. Looks steady enough. All right, let's give it a try. Watch out! Ugh. Is it just me or are we not welcome here? Keep going. I'll find We're a way to meet up with you. We're Over-eager apprentices. So, time for us to move a little bit down and find a different way. The gameplay feels a bit console-y, if I shall say that, uh, which does not surprise because we are playing a multi-console game. Well, you tried. The white dots give you an indication about potential other enemies. And as you can imagine, this is very much a movement based game. Everything um, alright down there. Just a sneaky wanderer. You? Same. But given managed. that we're playing on the hardest the difficulty. The Maybe. We don't but want are to they be keeping hit. people outside town? 
Or are they keeping them in? The one thing that we need to look out for, I can already spoil as much, is there are always little things that you can take, left and right, typically material and alchemical resources, which we will need later in the game. I won't spoil what, but... Behind you! It's easy as falling off a box. Can't tell how long these people are dead. The original settlers, perhaps. Whoever, this doesn't bode well. Lots of dead people down here as well. And where they are dead, they are also under. Time to leave for good. What we can do is we can banish these guys as you can see once we filled up our aggression meter well, there we go tried. good got a lot of spectral dust here And as you can see, we're taking, if we're destroying kind of destructibles, um, you're getting some extra loot. Perhaps these words will be lost in time, but I must write them. The date I cannot say. The month is June of the year 1695. I, though we would be sa I thought we would be safer in the Providence. Uh, I thought it would finally see our children again and the golden wheat fields would ring with laughter. Their mother now lies dead and I shall join her soon. Something insidious walks the road. Terrible spirits took us. New Eden is cursed. Uh, you who reads this, I tell you, run. Fabulous. These people left New Eden town just a few days ago. What exactly is going on here? Good, there is the terrible spirit that attacked them. Unfortunately, it is too strong to just banish in one go. Gotta be a bit careful, don't want to get hit. Fabulous. That all goes badly for the case. Situation is worse than you thought. Let's wait to hear what Charles has to say. Empty docks in a growing settlement. Never a good sign. Other town selectmen sitting on their arses. Isn't that what selectmen do? We need to get into town, but I want to explore people who fear pestilence or disease. A little bit more. Or both. Well, how very biblical. Left and right, we can find resources. Not the busiest stables I've ever seen. No ostler and no horses. If they burned our crops and ran out of food, then they probably eat the horses. New Eden Town. I want to wait for a second and just admire the precision. It really gives you the damp, dark, 
in You're welcoming committee. Down field. Let's find the inn. Of Let's find Charles. Left city. So the atmosphere is It'll really good. It'll be good to good. see Charles and Esther again. <laughs> Would you a lecture on the sanctity of marriage? Esther wouldn't dare. And we don't need a piece of paper to keep us together. I, I remember you telling her. Good. Area of investigation. We've currently reached the location, which is why the whole uh, mm, uh, top of the bar begins to it's shimmer. The inn. And that is where we want to go into the inn. What I would want to do before we go in is just double checking if there are some more resources here. Cemetery is closed. A and curfew? A curfew. But why? Uh, the first resort of every self respecting oppressor. All right. Let's see what's really happening here. Charlie, we're here. Your prayers are answered. Pour us a drink. Finally. Banish it. Please, come in. As it is cold, your serving woman may sit while we talk. I'm the help. She's the boss. You're not Charles. My name is Antea Duarte. This is my partner, Red McWraith. Good day to you, sirs, madam. Now, where's Charles? Minister Davenport said help was on its way. I assume. Keep digging, Fairfax. Good day. Pennington, captain of the train band. This here is thick skinned Newsmith. We're the selectmen. <laughs> What's left of us? Why is Charles not here? We're sorry for your loss. We'll do what we can for his widow. The Reverend is dead. When? How? A terrible tragedy. Though our faith sustains us, we are still very much in shock. Our shock at Reverend Davenport's killing is so great that we must sit here in comfort, losing precious time. As governor of the colony of New Eden, it is my responsibility. Oh, look at us, sat here waiting to meet the same fate. We could all be miles away by now. You lot do what you want. I intend living. The esteemed select woman can be <coughs> brusque. Forgive her, and rest assured that her aptitudes far outweigh her manners, or lack thereof. Her point still stands, Fairfax. Sitting here, doing nothing, we are as lambs to the slaughter. The banishers are here. Surely, with their expertise, we may yet prevail. Then I shall leave you in your expertise in ghosts and devils to find out. My expertise in blood and battle is of little use. Mistress Duarte, if I can be of service, you may visit me at home. On the other side of the street, as it were. Well, Governor, shall you leave or shall you stay? For myself, I'll stay. <clears throat> Our company has suffered terribly. But we are worth saving. Now that you are here, save it we shall. Please, accept my sincerest condolences for the loss of your friend. We feel the loss of our minister so very keenly. Charles Davenport was a man of great knowledge and devotion. The pride, indeed, of New Eden. It discommodes me greatly to remember how we found his body in the cemetery. Indeed, it distresses me yet further to tell you that we do not know what so tragically cost him his life. What do you think that happened? What do you think happened? I could guess, to little use. 
It is evident, however, that Charles's unexpected death is linked to his investigation of the curse. In the Minister's absence, I try, in all humility, to protect us all, body and soul, from our ongoing peril. You see, in my youth, I too was something of a demonologist. Rather a good one, if I say so myself. We're not demonologists. And neither was Charles. Is his widow Esther taking visitors? The widow Davenport is at home and does not much venture out. Her house overlooks the dock. I offered Charles a home with a view across a pretty meadow, but he refused. He preferred the village life. Speak to her, if she'll see you. But she knows no more than we do about how her husband died. What can you tell me about the curse? I can tell you that it has been our misery for many long months now. And I can tell you that it worsens by the increment. First, there was pestilence and disease. Then came the nightmares. Then came madness. In the end came death. And death remains. But in all honesty... <laughs> I think the weather is the worst part. This never-ending winter hangs heavy on us all. Worse yet, it traps us here. What do you think caused the curse? In my humble opinion, I'll point to the obvious. The abyss disgorges its spawn upon New Eden, bent on making God's poor creatures suffer. As to the nature of the demon, that's what we're paying you to find out. Our late friend Charles faced a Herculean task and acquitted himself with honor. You will have to do far better than that, I'm afraid. Our contract stands. If you'll have it, yes. Our contract stands for Charles. All right, for Charles. Why is town so empty? Of those who did not die, we are the few who stayed. Though our motivations may differ, all who remain have shown extraordinary faith and courage in the face of our adversity. Those who left, where did they go? Boston, outlying settlements, anywhere, everywhere. Although, as you may have heard, the weather has likely closed the roads. Some believe the pass through the dark woods offers salvation. I do not. I believe we must stand our ground. You're a demonologist, you say? I am that, like my father was before me. Faith and science are our twin compasses, you see to a deeper understanding of the secrets of God's green and pleasant land and those who threaten it. And what have your compasses told you about the curse? They have told me... They have told me that Reverend Davenport was better placed than I to solve our problem. Which is why you're here. We agreed it. I shall stand for the company, I said, as the moral authority the anchor and the rock, as Charles and his banishers lift the curse. Perhaps we may come to you for advice. Please do, madam, for I would be only too glad to give it. Thank you. We have what we need. Then I wish you success. By my instruction, a room is prepared for you in the old schoolhouse. I'll be here if you need me. All right, time for us to get going. Well, this looks like a very grim situation that they got themselves into. Before we're leaving though, let's see what we find. As announced by the last Hound Hall meeting, I hereby close uh, the King Arms Tavern, leaving the key to the selectmen. 
shall be no one so drunk on uh, drink until the curse is lifted and I shall return okay we are going to take uh, as much money as we can of a very terribly much to get but we shall use whatever resources we can damn it charles those accursed sea storms if only we'd been here earlier no no but as charles would say another day another soul to save These people are helpless. These people have no idea what they're up against. So, you've done listening to Fairfax's prattling. That man turns a pretty phrase, and does so to the exclusion of all else. Tell me, Captain, what does your rank signify? Militia? I maintain the train band. I also anticipate threat. Natives, brigands, the French and other monsters. The curse, though, that's a whole different kettle of shite. Not even poor Davenport saw that one coming. Any thoughts on the origins of the curse? None useful. I'm a military man. I'm no dark artist. I'll take that as a gentle jab. You don't believe in my work. I can tell you're a woman of talent and capability. I respect that. The rest of it, that's your remit, not mine. Me? I'm the old guard. You and your Scots green on, you're the hope. You'd best prevail. We'll be back. I'll be here, unless I'm not. We should Very go good. to Esther. I think the Let's check out Esther's home. Esther is the widow. But before we do that, we have Six one skin, more. Right. We're sorry oh. to disturb you. It'll take more than you to disturb me. What do you want? I take it you intend to leave town. Bloody right, I do. New Eden is dying, and anyone who stays is dead or deranged. Will you go alone? I'll take my sister and anyone else who wishes. You may come too if you wish. You look like you can handle yourself. There's no hope for New Eden, then? Not till the weather changes, and it don't look like changing. What's your role here, if you don't mind me asking? Lately, I do what needs doing when no one else will, weakened as they are by comfort and the curse. In normal times, I hunt. Now, though, it's cold enough to freeze the nankies off an horse, and the game rots as quick as you can get it home. You can't eat a ghost, can't skin it, can't sell it. So what'll be the use? So, the curse. What do you think is going on? I think nothing much about it. I think folk sickened and the crops failed. I think folk went mad, and I know we found the Reverend dead. What of the governor? Anything I should know? That useless clatwagger. With Davenport dead, godly folk look to be led. Fairfax Askell couldn't be happier. I pity he'll get them all killed. What of the captain? Now there's a man of worth. Without Saul Pennington, there'd be no town left at all. These last months have been hard on him. I hope his metal holds. If I had my way, he'd be coming with us. I don't give a rat's knacks for loyalty, but the captain does. Well then, thank you for your help. Aye. Beautiful. Well, you get a vast variety of characters, shall I say. All three very different motivations. Uh, 
And one thing I learned is always check for resources. Antea, Red. Come in. I've barely slept for fear you would not come. I'm at a loss. Would God even allow me to drag you into these... these dark times? Esther, you're not alone now. We're here. I'm so sorry we didn't get here on time. Truly. I know. Charles kept saying it. Have faith. They will come. If only he had kept his faith himself. What happened to him? Poor Charles. Just one more victim of the curse of New Eden. You know how he is. Was. Restless. Impatient. It's not that he gave up on you, his friends. But that he could wait no more. I believe he tried to lift the curse. I too have questions. But I have no answers. Nor do I now have a husband. Is there anything we should know about? Lord, deliver me, for I cannot endure this. I cannot endure it, and Charles does not deserve it. Anything at all, Esther. Please. I have felt Charles present about the house. His ghost lingers. He needs help. If he's here, I promise I will know no rest until he has his. You can count on us. We'll start with the house. Charles's papers are gathered in his office. Take what you need. Thank you, Esther. How were things? You know, before all this. Before the curse. It was a busy and exciting time. Charles immersed himself in the community here. He had a hand in everything. The people came to rely on him. I'm sure they look to someone else now. But I can't imagine it's the same. We'll take a look around, if that's all right. All right, so... May I be of any help? We got the investigation feature, which is an interesting one. So uh, you get your cases and then every single case where there is kind of a ghost and a normal still living person will give you certain clues. For instance, here we see the hint after seeing her husband's ghost, grieving widow uh, Esther was deeply distressed. But it's unclear what her intention is yet. So, so far, I've only played through that very first uh, interaction. I haven't fully understood uh, why you need to graphically kind of represent it that way. It's a very neat and complex representation for something that's actually quite uh, easy. So imagine it to be a way. journal of uh, sorts. Now, generally what we can do now is we can read through all of the material. That porcelain saw many a dinner turned lecture with Charles. I miss him so. So do we, Esther. And by the virtue of some of uh, these findings, you will see an update uh, here. I'll give you an example. So that all of these here are just normal uh, clues. Purcell. could you find nothing better? These days I lack the heart to play. Can't believe you brought your piano forte to New England. It cost a fortune. But you cannot part a pianist from their beloved keys. 
But there are a couple of uh, things that are here. a little bit more strong. relevant. She lost him, and now he's back. A ghastly figure. It must be unbearable. For instance, the silver brooch here. Charles always wore this brooch. His things are untouched. Nothing's and moved. This here is an actual hint, as you can see. My dearest sister, Charles is dead. Cannot uh, uh, tell you which day it is or how long Charles departed. Nothing happened as it was supposed to. I could not attend the burial. Shame um, of it. Lord have mercy and guide us uh, and our friends. I do not have any words left in me. So Esther couldn't attend Charles's burial. Poor woman. That's terrible for her. Esther never got to say farewell to Charles. I could have made it manifest. Maybe. But there has to be more to it. Thirteen, when I say my bed shall comfort me, my couch uh, shall ease my complaints. Fourteen, then shows uh, though uh, scarest uh, me with dreams, and terrifies me through visions. Fifteen, uh, so that my soul chooses strangling and death rather than my life. She comes to me in dreams. Charles's notes mention Job, chapter 7, verses 13 to 15. I'll look for that reference. Red, you dropped something. Mm hmm. What do all of these dreams have in common? Are they a promise of doomsday or a nightmare common? Vision, foreshadowing, or someone behind this? Who's the real target? Was caused the anger? I need to know how it gets into our heads. Sleep no longer offers rest. I cannot predure. These notes are erratic ramblings. Charles was worried about the curse plaguing the settlers' dreams. How malicious is this curse tormenting people in their beds? Charles's ghost might give us answers. We should investigate the cemetery where he was found. All right. So, you can now see that the haunting case has been updated. So, we got a hint that she's deeply grieving. Then we know that she was unable to leave the house and attend uh, her burial. And then Esther Devonport did not probably bid her husband farewell. And that might have caused him to manifest. And Charles, uh, Charles on the other hand, uh, said that uh, he and other settlers had a bad dream. So that might be one of the hints. But the last hint is missing, which is why we now need to investigate uh, the cemetery. But that, dear friends and family, is going to happen the next time because we are well over time with our first episode of Banisher, uh, the Ghost of New Eden. And we're going to return right here with the next episode. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed it. Consider, if you like the game, to check it out. And uh, see you in the next episode. Goodbye and see you soon.